Dear brethren and friends. Wakeman here. The recovery path from narcissist and satanic ritual abuse is a hard and daring road. This is because the road is full of obstacles, in forms of disinformation and abusers, pretending to be guides for the road, discouraging the need for awareness, discipline and accountability. In other words, traveling on the recovery path starts and ends with our first and last step. And no one can walk for us. As we go through the recovery path, we develop love of the truth. And abhor for gaslight and deceptions. This is when we realize the scope of the abuse lies well beyond our personal experience. What I mean by this is that we recognize the world we live is currently controlled by the first narcissist, also known as Lucifer, and their human minions, the satanic narcissists. We become able to observe how this world is one giant gaslight, and everything we once were taught by the narcissist establishment is nothing but gaslight and deception. We can now clearly see the immense amount of people brainwashed by the narcissist establishment, defending and even perpetuating the gaslight and deceptions set in motion by the Luciferians. Take this day, for instance, Halloween. Despite people exposing the many levels of satanic ritual sacrifices taking place around this date, most people choose to call whoever exposed the truth tinfoil hat conspiracy theorists and to leave their kids vulnerable to all sorts of abuse and kidnapping. Being awakened amongst brainwashed people is a very difficult situation during the recovery path from narcissist and satanic ritual abuse. They are the very people who will invalidate your walk and persuade you to stop it. In addition to that, because you developed love for the truth and became born again in Christ, you've gained a spiritual discernment which allows us to see even beyond their gaslight and deceptions. With real eyes, we realize the spiritual aspect present during the recovery path from narcissist and satanic ritual abuse. At this point, we learn that we have a weapon that can destroy them. Prayer. I hope the following video inspires you to learn how to use this powerful weapon to destroy the workers of iniquity and use it from this day on in your life. God bless you. Please remember Jesus Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. Spiritual warfare is a biblical phrase used to describe the battle for control over people's souls. Whether you believe in God or not, God has created you for a reason. He created you to know Him, worship Him, and to experience His love. And God has an enemy who is the devil. And this enemy is competing and fighting to destroy your soul. His tactic may be different depending on whether you already know the Lord or not, but know one thing, that his purpose is always to deceive people through his lies and keep people from experiencing the love of God. This is where spiritual warfare comes in. In short, it is the battle between the enemy and God's people. Like the term is saying, spiritual. The battle is not physical. There are basically three things that are fighting for the ownership of your heart and my heart, which are the world, the flesh, and the devil. Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 6.12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, this warfare has got to be fought in the spirit and on our knees. 2 Corinthians 10.4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Here, the Apostle Paul is reminding us that since we do not fight against flesh and blood, likewise, the weapons to be used in this warfare are not physical either, but they are mighty, more powerful, 
and they are spiritual. One of these weapons is prayer. Prayer is a weapon. It is a bullet that does not miss its target, and prayer hits the bullseye. However, unfortunately, we forget this reality at times. But today, we are going to use one of the most powerful weapons we have been given by God. Prayer. Now let us pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into the courts with praise. I bless your name, Lord, for you are great and you are greatly to be praised. I adore you, Lord, and I worship your holy name. I stand before your throne of grace and I thank you for your goodness and for your mercy upon my life. And I thank you, Lord, for watching over my life and for your protection. The protection of the blood of Jesus, I thank you, Father God, for clothing me in a robe of righteousness, which covers me because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I cast down vain imaginations and every high thing that lifts itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I pray that God's anointing destroys every yoke of bondage in my life. I pray that you equip me with strength and wisdom and discernment. I pray that I be strong in spiritual warfare battles. Help me, Lord Jesus, to spend time in your presence through prayer and worshiping you. Thank you for giving me this weapon of prayer to fight against the enemy. I pray, Lord, that I may pray without ceasing and with all prayer and supplications. Help me, Lord, to put on the whole armor of God so that I may fight and guard my life against the attacks of the evil one. Help me to gird my loins with the belt of truth so that I may protect against the lies and deception of the devil. Help me, Lord Jesus, to put on the breastplate of righteousness to protect my heart from any temptation that may come my way. I pray that I may put on the preparedness of the gospel of peace for my shoes so that I may take the light of your word wherever you want me to take it. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that I may take the shield of faith to distinguish all the darts and threats that are hurled at me by the enemy. I put on the helmet of salvation to cover my mind, my thoughts, imaginations, and to remind me that I am a child of God and that I am forgiven, I am free, and that I am saved by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, that I take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the one which is an offensive weapon given to us for battle, your Word which has power to demolish strongholds. Thank you, Father, for your Word, which is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. I pray, Lord, that I may not try to fight and wrestle in my own strength, but to commit everything in your hands and to cast all my burdens to you, Lord, for you sustain. I pray that you surround me with your wall of fire and may your pillar of fire be seen wherever I abode tonight. I pray that I may abide in you and you in me. Father God, increase my power base by your continual infilling of the Holy Spirit. Yes, fill me to overflowing. I pray that you equip me with the spirit of discernment that I may be able to discern and perceive what is God's divine will and that which is diabolical in nature. Place upon me, Lord, the spirit of a watchman that I will pray with fervency and without ceasing. Help me, Lord Jesus, that I may not pray amiss, that my prayers will hit my target, and that they may crack the heavens open. I pray, Heavenly Father, that I load and equip myself with the Word of God so that I can use this sword of the Spirit to fight any warfare. I decree and declare that no weapon fashioned against me will be able to prosper, nor any tongue that rises in judgment I shall condemn, for this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. 
When the enemy comes to attack me, I pray, Lord, that your spirit lift up a standard against him in the name of Jesus, according to Isaiah 59, 19. Thank you, Father, for fighting my battles. And I decree and declare that if you, God, be for me, who can be against me? For nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the knowledge that greater is in you that is in me than him who is in the world. And I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loved me. As I pray, Lord, may your Holy Spirit help me in my infirmities and intercede on my behalf with groanings that cannot be uttered, for he is the only one who knows what to say in prayer of warfare according to the will of God. Thank you, Father, for your promises. For in Exodus 14, 14, you have promised that you will fight for me and that I will hold my peace. Thank you, mighty God, for your promises in Isaiah 43. You said, O God, you have called me by my name and I am yours, and that when I pass through the waters, you will be with me. And when I go through the rivers, they shall not overflow me. When I walk through the fire, I shall not be burnt, nor shall any flame scorch me. I thank you, Lord, for being there for me always. Indeed, you are the defender of God's elect. Thank you, Lord God, for these promises, which assures me protection and that I am safe in your hands. I seal this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen.